long way to be here. So without further, further ado, may I introduce Nelly, all the way from Weathering Heights. Thanks for having me on the show today. It was a long journey, but I needed to share my story with everyone about my life at Weathering Heights. So Nelly, what was it like to live with the Earnshaws at the Weathering Heights estate? Well, it was rather hectic with all the constant changes in the family, but I was able to help them figure out their differences and help them work through their troubled times in the household. How did you cope with all of, with, with all of the family after Heathcliff was brought into the family by Mr. Earnshaw? Well, it was rather difficult because the, fa the family was not very stable, and even though he was just an innocent, homeless boy, he faced many troubles, especially with Hinley, who was worried Mr. Earnshaw would take him in as a son instead of Hindley, which really worried him and overall made him envious. Do you feel sympathy towards Edgar Linton? Yes, however, I believe he knew what he was getting into when he married Catherine. Edgar Linton is kind of gentle, but somewhat cowardly. He gets, he gets pushed around because he's the complete opposite of the harsh personalities at Wuthering Heights. He loves Catherine deeply, but they are disconnected by Catherine's high passions which Lyndon can't understand. What is this earlobe, Jeffrey? <laughs> Look how stretchy they are, Jeffrey. Where's Got a bully on your back? <laughs> Call 1-800-BULLY-SMACK. Describe Heathcliff's childhood and how you think it affected how he turned out. Heathcliff entered the Earnshaw home as a poor orphan and was immediately stigmatized because he was all alone in the world. Baby Heathcliff was characterized as devilish and cruelly referred to as an it in the Earnshaw household. His language was gibberish, and his dark otherness provoked the labels gypsy, wicked boy, and villain. He quickly became a product of all the abuse and neglects he faced, which wasn't much of an improvement from the childhood he was rescued from. From the very beginning, Heathcliff bred bad feeling in the Earnshaw house. His arrival was seen as a direct threat to just about everyone, but mostly Hindley, when he was never fully accepted probably due to his dark skin tone, which gave away his gypsy ancestry, a point which caused him to face discrimination. Do you think Heathcliff and Catherine's love for each other could have prevailed in a different universe? No, they never would have been able to maintain a healthy relationship because fundamentally they were too similar in their recklessness. Their highly emotional temperaments would have prevented them from ever being truly together. Because Catherine considered Heathcliff to be a part of her, she didn't see her marry, marriage to Edgar as a separation from Heathcliff. For Heathcliff, though, soulmates should be together. Her death only increased his obsession, and he went so far as to have the sex to dig up her grave so he could catch one last glimpse of her. While he can be a horrible brute, it's easy to pity Heathcliff. After all, he found his perfect love, and she went off to marry a stiff like Edgar Linton. Is he a sympathetic figure? Edgar Linton is a kind, gentle, civilized, but somewhat cowardly man who represents the qualities of Thrushcross Grange as opposed to the qualities of Wuthering Heights. Married to a woman whom he loves but whose passions he cannot understand, Edgar is a highly sympathetic figure after Heathcliff returns to Wuthering Heights. How does he compare to Heathcliff? Is Catherine really in love with him? It's impossible to think that Catherine does not really love Edgar uh, with some part of herself. Although she marries him largely because of her desire for his social status, she seems genu genuinely drawn to his good looks, polished manners, and kind demeanor. But it's also impossible to think that her feelings for Edgar equal her feelings for Heathcliff. Compared to her wild, elemental passion for Heathcliff, her love for her husband seems frail and somewhat proper, like Edgar himself. Thanks for talking to us today, Nellie. You were a great help in discovering a more in-depth look into Weathering Heights. Thanks for having me. It was an honor to be on your show today and to be able to share my story. Polly, come here! Polly! Does your dog not listen? You well, try Pupperoni! Because all dogs love Pupperoni. Just look at that happy dog. Welcome to our show. Today we welcome another guest who has traveled a long way to be here. So without further ado, may I introduce Heathcliff, all the way from Weathering Heights. Thanks for having me. The journey was far, but I decided to come so I could tell my version of the story. Did you truly love Catherine? Our love exists on a higher spiritual plane. We are soulmates, two people who have an affinity for each other, which draws us together irresistibly. I often repeatedly call Catherine my soul. Our love existed even though we were not rich because we did 
did not need money to be happy with each other. What final impression did you have of Lockwood? Lockwood views me as a very intelligent, so I have respect towards him. And even though I was reluctant towards him, I was still able to be civil. Do you think that Edgar Linton was suitable for Catherine to marry? No, I do not think so. Besides his wealth, he is not who I pictured Catherine with. She loved me, but she would never admit it because she knew she had to please her father and do what was right for her future life. Do you like Mr. Earnshaw? I have a lot of respect for him because he took me in as one of his own children and raised me to be a good man, just like he was. I was able to learn from him and be able to run the estate by myself and earn good money. Do you suck at playing the piano? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Then you should try the Play It Yourself piano and impress all your friends with your beautiful playing. I don't even have to use my hands. <laughs> Where are your feelings towards Linton? He's my son, but I feel no emotional connection towards him. The only thing he was ever good for was marrying young Catherine and ensuring me the Thrushcross Grange estate. Do you ever feel like you were treated differently because of the way you looked? I was called names as a child, but I did not let it affect me, and I've never let it change who I am on the inside. If you could go back in time, what is one thing you would do differently? I have no regrets, because everything I did was justified from others' actions towards me growing up, and there's nothing I can change about that. Well, thanks for coming on our show. Tune in next week for another episode of our show.